Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today's kind of a cool day. We're going to be playing Plague Inc. on the iPhone. Now the premise of this game is to kill off all of humanity through diseases. Now that sounds morbid, but it connects perfectly into our epidemiologic transition model. In this game, you'll be looking at a map of the world. We'll see how disease spreads, we'll see how it can impact different societies, and what are some of the outcomes of if we have a major outbreak. All this stuff will connect into our population unit. You'll be able to see perfectly the epidemiologic transition model, some of the demographic transition models, even population densities and clusters as those impact the spread of disease. And I'll be narrating throughout this whole time. So this is a little bit different of video because I'm not going to be in it. It's going to be showing you my screen and a map of the world as we track our disease and help it evolve to try and take out all of humanity. So enough of me talking, I'm going to load up my phone now, start filming the app, and let's see what happens when we try to take over the world with disease. The first thing we have to do in the game is name our disease. I'm going to go with AP Human Geography because what else would we name it? Now, we need to pick where we want our disease to start. I think I'm going to go with Egypt. Now, the reason why I'm doing Egypt is because of its port. So it has some connections, and it's kind of right in the middle of the world. It's in Africa at the top. Now, one of the things that's going to be happening in this game is the disease will spread. It's going to defuse. Now, we're going to see a lot happen in this game. You can see the red dots right now popping up on Egypt. Those are people becoming infected. You can also see I'm gaining DNA points on the bottom left of the screen. This is what I can use to spend to kind of upgrade my disease you could think of. In just a little bit, I'll go to the menu where you'll be able to see the different abilities and transmissions and symptoms that I can change with my disease. So here is all the things that I can unlock for my disease as it will evolve over time. And this is important because just like in the game, real life, the same thing happens. Diseases change over time. And we're going to be covering that a little bit more when we get to stage five of our epidemiologic transition model. So here I'm actually taking off some of the symptoms. I don't want to kill a bunch of people right now. I'm more focused on spreading this thing. So when we're talking about the epidemiologic transition model, we're talking about this spread of diseases, but not just the spread of diseases. This model is looking at health threats and death for each stage of the demographic transition model. So you can see right now, we are starting to see the disease spread more. I've now put it in the water, the air, and also in blood. So we have a lot of different ways that it can spread. Now, throughout our population unit, we've talked about a lot of different things. You're seeing right now a bunch of concepts that you've hopefully already learned about. As the world mourns Harambe, which we can see on the screen right now, we are actually seeing the, the diffusion and migration of people. Some of it is travel, some of it's trade. There's tons of things happening. All the planes and boats represent this. One thing to note is you can see that a lot of the world is starting to become infected. Now we can see also all these red lines that are starting to move all over the place. That's actually showing the disease spreading by either a boat or a plane. We can see the United States is already infected. We can also see that Egypt is now almost completely infected. There's no healthy people left there. So now I added it to birds. We'll see what happens. Now, one thing to note while watching this is look at which countries get infected faster and which ones the disease is going to spread all the way through. The more red the country is, the more infected they have become. This connects back to our demographic transition model. Countries that are in a lower stage in this model are going to be more susceptible to these diseases. You can see too now the world is starting to watch. This is actually true for real life. Governments around the world focus on diseases. I'm right now taking off some of these symptoms to try and fly under the radar. I don't want to be detected yet. So as this continues to spread, I can see more and more people are being infected. I can also see that we have boats and planes that are still spreading this disease. Now, just like in real life, there's different events. So we just saw a hurricane. It looks like hit Mexico. Now that can increase the spread of diseases as we lose certain services. One thing that's interesting to note right now is look at Africa and also the Middle East. Egypt, yes, right now is starting to work on the cure, it looks like, but notice how fast people are becoming infected. It's because this region of the world is lower on our demographic transition model and also our epidemiologic. They're less developed. They don't have health care. They don't have access to new technology. One of the things to look at right now is India. Notice how India is relatively not infected. Now, all of a sudden, we can see this big boom, and India has now almost become completely infected. 
Even though countries like the United States have been infected for far longer, this all connects back to population density. It also connects back to our demographic transition model and our epidemiologic. India is not as developed as the U.S. India is a little bit more developed than Africa, but they're still growing. And one of the things that's happening in India is we have massive urban centers. We have these mega cities that are starting to form. You can see our disease, as I'm explaining India and everything, is continuing to spread. It just got to China, another densely populated area that is still developing. So you can see they fell relatively quickly. While again, the U.S. still has not been impacted. Now, when looking at our stages, it's important to understand for the epidemiologic transition model, we move from stage one, this famine, pestilence, lots of death. Eventually, the industrial revolution comes. We see receding pandemics, less death, but still we're going to see spread of diseases until we get to three where we're getting more and more degenerative diseases and less deaths of disease. Now, in this, we have urbanization that starts to occur. And one of the things that happened in between two and three is as we saw more urbanization, people didn't know how to wash their hands. They didn't realize they needed to. And we started to see a lot more deaths start to spike. And so that eventually got fixed as people figured it out. And then, of course, we get to stage four where we fight our degenerative diseases and you're starting to live longer. Now, you can see half of the world, actually more than half, is already impacted by our disease. And throughout this, you can see our trade routes now and all of our travel are completely red. Our disease is being spread throughout the entire trade, our travel system. Russia just fell relatively quickly. Now, Russia does not have access to the same technology and healthcare services that the United States or Canada has, and also Europe. However, Russia is sparsely populated. A lot of Russia is not inhabited. You can see I'm zoomed in now, kind of looking at all the trade and travel and what's going on. One of the things you can notice is some of these airports have X's across them, like Canada. That would happen in a situation like this in real life. They would actually close down ports. This would occur if we believe, if a country's government believes, there is a massive issue. They would start to shut down ports to reduce travel to try and prevent the spread of diseases. So you can see right now, I've kind of impacted almost the whole world now. Everyone is starting to fall to AP Human Geography because it's, of course, the best class ever. And so why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? Now, this is where the deadly part comes in the game. You can see already the death count is starting to rack up. And of course, the goal of this game is to try and destroy all of civilization before the end. The end comes when either I'm cured, the disease is gone, or all of humanity dies. Now, one of the things you can see right now is Norway actually begins to break down. This is something that could happen in real life. If governments can't control and protect their population, well, people will stop listening and we could have anarchy. Hopefully you're able to see some of the themes that you've covered in your population unit in this video. And while watching this map and all these interactive things that are occurring, I didn't specifically state all the different stages of the epidemiologic transition model and point out every single spot on the map of where they were occurring and connect everything to all the population clusters and the demographic transition model. I just don't have enough time. But hopefully by understanding those concepts and watching this video, you can see for yourself some firsthand account of what would happen and how we see, even in this game, the spread of disease impacts countries that are lower in the demographic transition model, lower in that epidemiologic, and have higher population densities and clusters. As you can see, AP Human Geography eradicated the human population. Nothing really could stop us. In real life, things would hopefully be different though. Governments around the world spend millions and billions of dollars on making sure that we are preventing outbreaks from this from occurring. We'll put travel bans or restrictions on certain products from certain areas when outbreaks are occurring and monitor them closely. In the United States, the CDC takes care of us domestically, trying to prevent things like this from happening. As more and more countries become advanced, both in the demographic transition model and the epidemiologic, we become better prepared to handle things like this. Now, there is always that risk of stage five. With globalization, increased poverty, and also the evolution of disease, will we see something that maybe we can't plan for? But we won't know that for sure until later down the road. And by then, we'll also have more advanced technology to be able to help us counter that. So we have to be optimistic. 
I hope this helped you better understand the epidemiologic transition model and also some of the other themes that we've talked about in our population unit. I'm Mr. Sin. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, especially if you like the video. It helps support my channel and it really does make an impact. If you also have any questions on anything that I went over in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to as many as I can. Thank you again for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.